let's start with some of the things that Abigail just talked about. Inflation. How much are people concerned, investors concerned, and should they be concerned about what we've seen from inflation? Investors always have to be concerned about inflation because inflation is one of the things that can lead to the end of a business cycle, tightening rates, uh, recession, you know, bear markets. We don't see that yet. We actually agree um, with Chairman Powell that we should expect inflation and we should expect it to be transitory. There are a lot of inflationary forces at work in the market. We're reopening. Right? We wouldn't have been here together last May, and yet here we are. We're reopening. Um, and so you, we, we need to expect inflation, and we need to ex expect some surprises, because the economy closed down in a very synchronized manner, but it's reopening in stages. And so we need to expect some of these surprises. And I, and I always think that Janet Yellen has a great way of making economics human, and she reminds us it's not just statistics, it's people's activity. And if I think of my own activity in April, I was representing the reopening of the economy and some of those sectors that really drove uh, the CPI increase. I, I'm grateful to be fully vaccinated. I was traveling on my first business trip, renting a car, flying on a plane, going to restaurants. Those were some of the sectors. As we address this question of transitory uh, against not transitory, which Jay Powell has talked about repeatedly, how informed should we be about how much money is sitting on the sidelines, particularly in households? There's a lot of money sitting out there that doesn't really have a way quite yet to express itself. Well, that's right. If you look at households, households are in very good shape, right? Three trillion dollars in household household bank accounts, savings accounts. You look at stimulus this year that's going to households, which will actually be twice as much as what went last year. You know, 600 billion last year, a trillion two this year. So households are in very good shape, which again is a good sign for the economy because if we think about the 2008 crisis, that's a crisis that really hit households in a different way because of the housing component of it. Households today are actually in very good shape. Uh, and to what extent do people uh, run away from bonds in this environment? Because it seems like whatever happens, it doesn't seem like bonds will gain in value very much going out. Well, that's right. We are. We have seen interest rates, you know, decline for most of our investing lives, and now we're seeing them uh, begin to rise. And so, there's always a role for bonds in the portfolio. It's a smaller role going forward. It's a smaller role because, as you note, returns are going to be much lower. But there's always a role, and we're broadening portfolios portfolios to get exposure to other things to make up for what you used to get from your bond portfolio. We're seeing some of the tech stocks get partic hit particularly hard. Now, they drove a lot of the market for a long time, mm -hmm. uh, and they're still well up overall. But at the same time, what is the problem with tech when it comes to inflation? Is it just because there is, they're so richly valued that when people get nervous, they run away from it? Look, I think there are two things. I think the tech stocks really, um, you know, led the recovery because of the way we were spending our time last year, right? They really enabled us to keep the economy uh, open to a certain extent. So uh, you saw tech stocks, um, you know, get very high multiples because of that and also because investors were willing to pay for growth in a sector that was growing when you had so many sectors not growing. Now what you see is with interest rates rising, it actually reduces the present value of the cash flows and earnings of tech stocks. And so that's what you're seeing, a rotation, but it's a rotation into sectors that we should all be embracing, mid-cap, small-cap, value, non-U.S. stocks. We think all of these uh, will play good roles in the portfolio. So follow up on that. Who might ve benefit, actually, from inflation? For example, financials? So financials um, will benefit from inflation, and in particular, the difference between short-term and long-term, right? Um, so that's a sector that benefits. Um, energy often benefits from inflation. Um, so ma many sectors benefit from higher rates. How concerned are your investors right now when you talk to them? Uh, mm -hmm. How worried are they? Because there's a lot of uncertainty in the marketplace right, right now. As you say, right. we've never seen this happen in our right. economy ever. Shut it down and That's bring right. it back. That's uh, right. How anxious are people out there? So if we talk to our clients, they really focus on three things. They focus on the economy because they're business people. They focus on the markets because they're investors. And they focus on taxes because they're taxpayers. And so um, our, 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 client, our clients are sort of living the reopening of the economy as business people. They see the supply, demand, and balances as they're trying to hire and trying to get workers. Um, they've benefited, obviously, from the markets as markets have you know tipped to all-time highs in recent weeks and even now, still up nicely year to date. And so what we're, we're talking to them a lot about right now is taxes. They feel that that's much more uncertain. They know the, they know the proposals that have been um, uh, introduced by the Biden administration, but they're asking us, will they pass? There are very narrow majorities. If they pass, when will they be effective? How will it affect the market? So uh, one of the questions about tech, actually, that mm -hmm. I have is about taxes. Mm -hmm. Because if you've made a lot of money, at least on paper, mm -hmm. by, by uh, the uh, appreciation of the tech stocks, does it indicate maybe you should sell those right now and take the lower capital gains if you think it's around the corner? 
So what we tell our clients, we tell them two things. Number one, as an investor, time is your biggest advantage because markets tend to grow over time. So we say plan, don't panic. Do things that you would otherwise do for your portfolio. Tech stocks rose to be, you know, the five largest tech stocks rose to be something like 25% of the S&P 500. If you've got large concentrations, outsized positions, you might want to trim those. You might want to trim those for investment reasons, but also potentially for tax reasons. You might want to consider accelerating some gains to this year if it otherwise makes sense for your portfolio. Because but because rates will probably be higher going forward. We've pumped a lot of money in this economy, fiscal and as well as monetary, frankly, mm -hmm. pumped a lot of money in. Uh, the Biden administration wants to put a lot more in, in infrastructure investment, what it calls mm -hmm. infrastructure investment. Should that be of concern to investors because they're concerned that maybe we're over-hyping the economy? Look, I think it's very hard to argue that investing in this country's aging infrastructure is a bad idea and that it's bad for the economy. I think it's actually a very good idea and it will be good for the economy. Think of us as commuters in New York, right? More, more investment in our infrastructure will be a very good thing for us and for the economy. Uh, but to what extent should we even count on that? Do you think that it's likely we'll get, get I know you're not a politician, you're not a political analyst, but at the same time as an investor, should we be anticipating maybe we finally will do something at least about infrastructure? It's been so long we've talked about it. So I'm not, as you say, I'm not a politician, but it's my impression that both Republicans and Democrats think that this would be a good mm -hmm. thing. And so it's really a question of, um, you know, how much and where and how. Um, and I think for the economy, recognize that infrastructure spending happens over many years. You don't get a big burst to the economy and, and overheat the economy in a single year, right? Infrastructure projects take a very long time. So you sort of see them play out over a decade.